Hi everyone, it's Kim from Fleece and Harmony. This is episode 135 of our Knitting and Crochet podcast. It's being recorded in our yarn shop, in our woolen mill, on our sheep farm in Belfast, Prince Edward Island. And if you're watching this on the day that it's been published, it is November 24th. My mom's birthday, actually. So happy birthday, mom. <laughs> and uh, welcome to all of you. So if you, you're new here, this is a podcast about, uh, we talk a little bit about our farm and our sheep and our knitting and crocheting and spinning. And uh, I will be joined with the two gals that work with me, Simone and Betsy. And uh, we welcome everybody that's been following us for quite a long time and anybody that's new. Also, if you're new, you can really help us and you enjoy it. You can um, help us by hitting the like button and liking our podcast. And uh, we encourage you to subscribe so you get notifications when we release a podcast. We release uh, the Knitting and Crochet Project podcast every second week on Fridays. And the alternate weeks, we release a Harmony Reads podcast where we talk about the books that we've been uh, been reading. Um, also, if you um, we're, we're really, really close to hitting the next milestone on subscribers. So if you want to share the podcast with your friends, if you think they uh, you have other uh, crafty friends that would like us, then uh, we would really appreciate it if you would share as well. So today, uh, usually when we uh, start, we talk about a little bit of a farm update. And uh, we actually had our first snowfall of the year where the snow kind of stayed on the ground. And uh, we snapped a few pictures of the sheep this morning. So they're all out in the snow. So we'll show a couple of those while I'm talking. So, so far our sheep are actually, have still been grazing on fresh grass. Um, we've had them all the way around the farm. Uh, last uh, episode, they were over in a side, a small side field that we have. Uh, for the last week, they've actually been all around the mill. So we've been loving it because as we look out the windows, we get to see them with all their little sheepy antics during the day. And it has this... Um, weirdly calming effect on you to, to just be watching them grazing and they mosey along and um, they move to the next little spot and uh, it's just really really peaceful and lovely to see them and uh, so they're still eating fresh grass but uh, Ken and I were talking today that uh, it looks like it's time to uh, get out the feeders and start feeding them dry hay because uh, um, the grass, we don't want them to over graze the grass right now because the grass is not um, actually still growing. It's kind of gone into hibernation and we don't want to uh, overgraze the, the field. So probably starting tomorrow, they'll be uh, getting their dry hay. They still have access to the outside, so they'll graze in whatever grass is uh, left until for them it's too hard of a work to get a full meal, and then they'll fill themselves up with the dry, the dry hay. And we also have to uh, get the heaters going on the water buckets for the horses and the, uh, and the sheep. So everything's peaceful, and uh, it a, was lovely this morning with just a gently falling snow, and we'll probably talk about it again with Simone and Betsy, but it's a bit unusual to have snow that's on the ground and staying on the ground this time of year. Um, often we're just wondering if we're going to have snow for Christmas, uh, but it was really, really a very beautiful uh, morning this morning. So usually the next thing I would do in the podcast is do a shop update, but I am not really going to do that uh, today because we're talking about a lot of product products in the sections with uh, Betsy and Simone, and we talk about them quite a, quite a lot. So um, you can skip to those sections if you want and see what products. We have a new yarn that's coming out. Um, which will be, uh, it's going to be a breed specific yarn. So we talk about that in the, in the mill section. We also are launching um, roving. So we're going to have a selection of roving for felting that we'll be introducing to the store. We've always had a little bit of roving, but we haven't really done like a comprehensive selection, but we will be starting to do that. And we'll talk about that um, in the section with the three of us. 
And um, Simone did this fantastic project with our Heather Dale Lopey and uh, uh, Kid Silk Haze type uh, yarn held together. So we uh, show some detail about how to get the same effect that Simone did with this project uh, in this, this section with Simone. But there are a couple things that I want to bring to your attention, uh, specifically in this shop update. I was thinking that you might want to uh, be making your list and checking it twice. And we have a couple of products that are relatively new to the shop. And I wanted to um, just show them here uh, one more time. So we have started carrying Thread and Maple. So Thread and Maple is a lovely uh, women-owned company that is based in Quebec. And they make these beautiful, uh, well, they make a lot of beautiful products but we have just started carrying the needle binders so it's an organization tool for your knitting needles and because we specialize in chiago needles i've started with the the pages that um are for chiago so they are available on our website uh, we carry the chocolate color leather and the whiskey this is the whiskey this is my store sample so um, this one is in whiskey and the way that these work is that you can buy you buy the binder separately and it comes in two sizes they have the regular size binder which will hold four of the pages that are on the inside and they have the jumbo binder which can hold seven of the pages so depending on what you want um, there they have uh, I have pages for all of the Chiago needles the different sets and there's also project pages which are just general pages that you can take out and um, carry your things that you need just for your current work in progress and they have notions pages which is our brand new and um, the notion pages uh, are, are just we just started carrying them a couple weeks ago all of the pages um, come out of the binder and then fold together and snap closed so you can make little pouches with all of the pages that you uh, that you have in the binder and again I just want to make sure that um, it's clear that the binder is sold separately and then you buy pick and choose the pages you want to put in your binder and buy those uh, separately and the way that they go together is that there's this really smart little snap um, strap system and then the pages have loops that go go over the uh, the loop that's created with the snapping uh, join the i also want to mention that these uh, are made and sewn hand sewn in the ukraine so the uh, the leather uh, products are coming to canada uh, being imported by thread and maple from the ukraine so it's really nice to be supporting uh, businesses in the Ukraine and you get a, this beautiful beautiful um, tool to carry all your things that need organizing so you can check that out uh, if you just put thread and maple in the search on our website you'll see the full collection the other thing that I wanted to mention is that we've started carrying the Leica uh, ball winder and we're carrying it in the rosewood color so this ball winder is a piece of art I have to say it's just just gorgeous and I've showed it on other podcasts um, but we the um, enthusiasm for this has been a little bit <laughs> crazy um, so we've actually had to order three times so this is uh, I have more coming in uh, luckily uh, the distributor that I buy it from is uh, super quick in uh, shipping so if you had tried to order this and we were out of stock then you can check back on the website um, we have been continuing order ordering it and uh, we've been uh, getting more in so we're getting some in it's been every week now so if you if you thought you missed it uh, we're just uh, an order is coming tomorrow actually so uh, we do have these um, these in stock again and I think that's all that I'm going to talk about for the shop right now because we'll see like I said all kinds of different products we have a lot of new things happening um, which you'll see in the different sections 
Um, if you want to skip around on the podcast, we do do chapters. So uh, you can check in the show notes and see if there's your favorite section. Uh, if you want to visit with Simone and you don't want to see the three of us or whatever, however you want to uh, enjoy this podcast, then you can um, check the chapters uh, and go to what you want, want to see specifically. But first, we're going to get together with Simone and talk about the projects that she's worked on and some finished projects that she did that we didn't know about before. So we have a really interesting segment segment with Simone. So let's pop on over and see her. <laughs> Hi, Simone. Hi, Kim. <laughs> well, what's happening today? All sorts of stuff. We yeah. We for snow. Yes, we did. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm sure I talked about that in the the introduction because it was a little bit of a shock it's not that often actually that we have full ground covering snow before christmas yeah it's kind of i we haven't had that for a few years now yeah it's becoming rare so but after the it looked pretty nasty when we peeked out the window at 5 40 this morning Mm -hmm. you were out probably running yep and uh was it nasty where you were yep yeah like full on yep you couldn't see across the street and then the sun came out, and it was still snowing, and it was absolutely beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, really, really gorgeous. It was the kind of day where you don't really want to come inside. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> okay, so we have quite a lot to talk about. We do. So, and I'm going to refer to the, uh, the agenda because I don't want to miss anything. Right. And what we're going to do in this episode is that I have done like a very brief shop update saying that we are going to talk more about everything in the segment so Mm -hmm. uh, we have a lot of stuff on the table to talk about uh, with the with the projects and everything that have been been done yeah so um and the very first thing I forgot to take chestnut off the (laughs) on your section because you already told me that you didn't have your chestnut with you yeah so, but why don't we just start with uh, Marie Wallen then sure okay yeah we'll start off with that so there's another little while a couple yep. months yeah actually couple still months still yeah for the marie wallen did along um right. the end date is february 29th that's not a mistake because it's actually a leap year yep. next year um at five o'clock atlantic time so mm-hmm. if you're completing projects get them in the thread for the finished objects right. and you're eligible to win a prize yes yeah so we have four prizes. Yep. So we'll draw names randomly. The mm-hmm. first person that uh, gets drawn, what we're considering is the first prize, is a set of Diva's Desire yarns. There's yeah. nine of them in the selection. So we actually made two selections, mm-hmm. one colorway and another colorway, yeah. sort of. And uh, so the first name that's drawn can choose that, or they could actually choose some of the other prizes yeah. as well if they want it yeah. so they don't have to take the yarn if they don't want the yarn because the other prizes are a marie wallen book of your choice mm-hmm. we have all of the books that she's published yeah. in the shop so you can choose one of those and uh the the um fourth prize is a hand spun hand spun yarn done yeah. by simone so you yeah. the first person that's drawn can choose any of those things mm-hmm. Then the second person that's drawn can choose out of the three that's left, and we'll do it. We'll do it that way because yeah. that makes sense. And uh, again, to go back, the first what we're saying is the first prize is nine skeins of Diva's Desire mm-hmm. in a colorway, and then the second prize is also nine skeins of Diva's Desire in a different selection of colors. It's kind of like broken down by warm and cool. Yeah. Uh, as we said, third is the Marie Wallen book of your choice, and fourth is the um, hand spun stain right. by Simone. Yeah, yeah. So she's touched lovingly every <laughs> single centimeter of that stain. And I forget you said that. I think it's uh, how many ounces? Um, the one that I had, it's a little, little textured. Okay. So there'll be the option of that one okay or um i'm spinning up some more oh really okay. nice stuff so you'll have a choice a choice too. okay yeah. and so. it then it's about what how many ounces uh, i think more than two one, right? yeah definitely yeah it's probably around five ounces oh wow okay yeah. so it's it a could, big one it could be a big big skein yeah so get your things in uh, ravelry so there's the uh, there's the finished object thread and mm-hmm. then there's also a chat thread yeah which is pretty active isn't it yeah and it's great because people are sharing ideas and tips yeah and tips and tricks yes. and 
supporting each other, right? Encouraging each other. It's great. Yeah. So yeah. if you haven't done your Marie Wallen project, you still have time to even knit with me because I haven't done finished mine. So I'm going to um, just show here. So I have worked on this, if you can believe it. It's not really, uh, it's not done yet. But this is the Walnut Tam. And uh, in the, that was in Wildwood yes. book, right? Yes. Yeah. So in the book, the pattern has, I think it's 10 colors. Mm. So it's quite I, a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's quite a lot. So I decided to edit the colors and Simone helped me with this. And she actually did, redid the chart for me with the colors. And I'm really, really thankful that you did. It because makes a big difference. It does make a big difference. So you can color it in. Too, yeah. like if you want so this is how it's uh turning out so far so i think the colors are working pretty well I have to switch it to that. yeah it's it's pretty lofty isn't it the yeah. divas do, even though it's very fine it yeah. does have a little bit of the squishy squishiness to it i really love it yeah it's nice okay. so um so this is it maybe you can take a picture i'll just show the progress right. there's not a lot of progress but i am almost to the point where i start the decreases right. i have a five or six rows left. I have to say, it's not the easiest thing to memorize. No. I, and I, I would, I suspect that all of her patterns are like that. Um, I find that the larger ones yeah. tend to be easier because you're repeating the same motifs yes. or yes. stitch patterns uh, throughout. So with a smaller project, you do have to pay more attention. Yeah. It, yeah. Ironically. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because by the time I'm just getting to the last third of the row and yeah. then I have that row memorized. So, and then I'm on the next one. And then it so switches it, up. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, obviously her patterns and motifs are gorgeous, Yeah, but to get that subtlety and that gorgeousness, they're a little bit they're, so technical. It's, just, it's not, it's knitting. So it's not, I, I hate to say that it's hard, but yeah. you have to have your wits about you a little bit. Yeah. And I'm doing it while I'm watching TV. So I'm, I'm trying to do both things, which probably is not, not that great of an idea, but I'm, um, easy to see if you made a mistake though. Yes. Because yeah. they, the pattern flows and so far so good. So I have just been slow, a yeah. little bit slow. So I had been knitting on it. Um, but honestly, I'm doing like three or four rows and then I'm doing hey, something else. It's all progress. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, so that's, that's that. But it's now that I'm coming up, like I said, I have, uh, four or five rows before we start the decreases. They mm -hmm. seem like they're pretty sharp decreases too. So yeah. it'll go, it'll definitely be finished by the deadline, <laughs> by the deadline. And I don't know, I might want to start something else too with yes. a, one of another one of her designs because yeah. you really have to have an appreciation um for like the color play yeah yeah she is really like she's got it she definitely has an act there yeah exactly yeah. so that's and the even the um like the lace and textured stitch projects too i really love those mm -hmm. um so rianne is one of my favorite sweaters in rotation right now that you just finished yeah. yeah 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 and i actually like the the shaping for that too with a kind of drop shoulder oh, okay yeah. um it was fun to piece yeah i think together yeah. so don't be afraid of that either yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay so um she yes, there's this. What did we say? There's like more than a thousand patterns yeah, by it's Marie Wallen. Amazing. Yeah, crochet, yeah. knitting, and uh, I don't see Betsy didn't bring her lovely shawl. So um, Betsy is actually crocheting mm. a project for the Marie Wallen thing. Yeah. So we were, probably will be talking about it in her section because mm. she did, doesn't have it with her. But if you're a crocheter, Marie this Wallen has something for you. Too. For you. And if you want to dabble in crochet and mixed uh, mm -hmm. with knitting, there is also that. Yeah. I think yeah. Winter, is that one of the books? Yes. That has yes. the mix. And they have like crochet panels in them and mm. stuff. It's very intriguing. Maybe yeah. That's what I should try. Yes. I yeah. I think you should. It's, <laughs> it's really, it's, I, it really is intriguing. And there is a cardigan in there that I think is just beautiful because you crochet around the edges and stuff mm. like that. And it's really, but the cardigan itself looks like it's fairly simple, yeah. relatively speaking. But yeah. anyway, so check out Marie Wall and um, she, if you haven't knit anything or made anything uh, from her before, it's, it's, uh, yeah. it's, she's really talented. Yeah. Yeah. 
And we've been seeing some fun projects in the finished object thread where people have also decided to simplify things down oh, and okay. use maybe two or three colors instead of the called for 10. Yeah. And take a look through there if you're feeling a little bit overwhelmed with some of the projects because guaranteed there's something there for you. Yeah. And people have been really kind to help others choose right. colors and, and things like that. So, yeah, good. All right, so um, then the next thing, you have a finished object. I do. Yes, the natural black socks that you were working on. Yes. Okay. And you're sure Kirby doesn't watch this? I'm positive. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but it is funny because we were at the, um, the jiu-jitsu gym, and I was working on the second sock, and <laughs> Matt goes, oh, what are you knitting? Are you making socks? Are they for him? Ugh. No, no, it's a shop sample. Oh, okay. <laughs> Any believes you? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. So they're gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah. So this, uh, unfortunately, we're sold out yeah. of the yarn, and we have no more black fleece. Not until next it. year. Yeah. So we will have to wait till next year. So for the people that got it, you you got it. We sold it every last bit of it. They're really really nice. Yeah, I'm very yeah. happy with them. They're and kind of creamy feeling yes yeah. exactly like that's silky. exactly how they feel yeah so um if you haven't knit up your natural black yet these were knit on a what size needle three millimeter three millimeter needle yeah and um so natural black but they're dark brown yeah. and this is a pattern that you just made up yeah uh, while you were watching wrestling her daughter wrestling <laughs> yeah. competition okay yeah so i will I, I kept notes so i will eventually release it on my blog as a free pattern okay um it just won't be this week no <laughs> okay <laughs> all right so they're beautiful so yet to be named free pattern yeah two by two rib yeah and a slip stitch heel yep all my favorite things okay yep. right <laughs> they, they look great and easy to memorize yeah yeah, yeah. it's good if you want kind of i won't call it mindless because it's not really mindless yeah. but if you want rhythmic rhythmic knitting yeah yes. something that you don't always have to think about and you can kind right. of zone it with yeah right. it's good and you have another pair of socks that are not quite finished in case you were wondering what happened to the hollingborn socks <laughs> they haven't grown much yeah <laughs> <laughs> i'm on to the second repeat of the motif so yes. this is the second sock the first one is in here yeah and I'm doing kind of like a summer and winter thing so I reverse the colors awesome yeah yeah and these are knit with um, point, prim sock. point prim sock yarn with kids of no just nope. point prim sock point yarn prim. yeah yeah okay in chestnut and slate yes yeah. beautiful they really feel it feel nice yeah. yeah our point from sock is my favorite for my own hand knit socks right because they're just so squishy yes yeah. and i um every time you pull these out i'm surprised at um how, how much halo it has because our sock yarn is strengthened with mohair so we don't yeah. use any synthetic fibers in the mill at all and um i know mohair is fluffy mm -hmm. but it just doesn't doesn't really look fl like it's going to be fl fluffy in the ball. Yeah. And when I sit with Betsy, um, I have my trait uh, sweater that I'm working on, which is also made in point prim sock yarn, but I am holding kids silk haze with yeah. it. But it does have a, quite a lot of bloom on its own. Yeah, it does. Too. Yeah. And it's very bouncy. Yes. I like it that. Is. Yeah, it's yeah. gorgeous. These so are really will nice eventually. Sock. So this was a pattern. Uh, it was uh, Charlotte Stone yes. out of... 52 two weeks of socks volume one. one yeah volume one yeah okay great they're gorgeous Maybe i don't know i don't know how you feet. can yeah i don't know how you can resist knitting on them so you could wear them <laughs> <laughs> now this is getting colder i might pick up the pace a little bit yeah <laughs> <laughs> right that's right yeah okay and then the next thing uh so we covered the walnut hat the make along so the next thing is a finished object mm-hmm which was a complete surprise. I didn't know that you were another one that pulls things out of her <laughs> tickle trunk. <laughs> if nobody knows what the tickle trunk is, you're, you're, if for people that are in Canada, from Canada know exactly what the yep. tickle trunk is, but may, you may not know in the U.S. But uh, there was a children's show called Mr. Dress Up. Yep. And he was all about imagination and yes. things like that. So he pulled things out of his tickle trunk to like dress up clothes yep. and things like that. 
And there's actually just been a documentary made about him. Did you I see I saw it? that. I didn't see the documentary, but I saw that they made the documentary. Yeah, I had no idea that him and Mr. Rogers actually started together. Oh. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I knew that he and Fred Penner were yeah. so pretty they, close. But... Yeah, they had done, which Fred Penner, if you don't know, is a, is a musical, like a musician that plays mostly for children. Yeah. And um, so Mr. Rogers and... Um, Ernie Coombs, which was Mr. Dressup's real mm -hmm. name, actually worked together, I think, on a show that was uh, broadcast by the PBS okay. in the U.S. And then um, they and then they both came or they both came to Canada okay. because it was a CBC that started a, the first show. So uh, if I'm remembering this correctly, so the it was actually the neighborhood was in Canada and oh, then cool. Mr. Rogers moved back and then maybe it went on P PBS but Ernie Coombs stayed here yeah and they had they both had a and they're they're not exactly the same the shows were kind of different yeah but the um but the it was all about ki the kindness and yeah. inclusivity yeah. even back then because the kid, there's a, two puppets on Mr. Dress Up, Casey, Casey and Finnegan. Finnegan. <laughs> Finnegan is clearly a dog, yep. but Casey is a little person. Is a little person. Yep. And nobody knows anything else about Casey except that it's a little person. Yep. Casey's Casey. Yeah. <laughs> and I think the puppeteer is still alive and she's not saying anything either. Cool. Yeah. So, <laughs> which is, I think, great. That's why every kid identified yeah. with the, the whole premise of the show and everything. Plus, so. it was fun. Yeah. And my aunt used to call, my aunt used to call Mr. Dress Up, Mr. Mess Up. Oh. <laughs> because we, my cousin Kyle and I would have a lot of fun with the show and he would do crafts and things like that. Right. So then we would do the crafts, yeah. but usually quite messily. Yeah. They, he didn't mind making yeah. a mess. No. Anyway, Mr. Dress Up is... Had a tickle trunk. Yeah. And pulled things, magical things out of it. Yes. And lots of costumes. Yes. Just like you and Betsy do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so we should show what we're talking about. Yes. <laughs> I talk about going on a tangent. So it's kind of hard to show unless I put it on. Yeah. I can do that. Yeah. You're going to take a picture probably. There we go. Oh my goodness. It's so, a little, little red riding hood. Yeah. Except it's not, maybe I should make one in red. There we go. Oh. <laughs> it's beautiful. This is the Tromso hoodie by Sisu Knitwear. And it's a free pattern um, wow. available on Ravelry. Right. And I used our Heatherdale Lopi. And some, it's kind of like Kids Okay's, but it has alpaca in it mm -hmm. from Crux Fibers. Um, the reason why I used that was because I was stash diving. Mm -hmm. And... I've been a little bit too diligent about stash diving. Yes, Simone's going low. through her stash. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it, I saw this pattern, and I thought, I need this in my life. Right. Um, it's so gorgeous. It's very warm. It's very cozy. And I, I had it, it on morning. for five seconds, and it can tell you that it is warm and cozy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, tested it out this morning, and it's perfect. It's exactly what I needed, and I might need a couple more of them. It's gorgeous. Yeah. So it's two balls of our Heatherdale Lopi. Yep. And uh, and it, does it use up the full two balls, or you just Pretty have well. a earth gains, I should yeah. say? Pretty well. Yeah. And it, it's held double with, um, like, a Kitzel case. Yeah. Or we have another option, too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So because I didn't do a proper shop update, we're going to show you, um, mm -hmm. reintroduce you to the Heatherdale Lopi yep. here so you can make this project if you want. And yeah. it's absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, it's really easy to knit, too. And yeah. it's got your favorite twisted rib. Yeah, it is my favorite. <laughs> so um, I think... Yeah, that's natural. Yep. That color is natural. Mm -hmm. And you could pair almost anything yeah. with it. The choices that we had for Kitzel K's is Luster, mm -hmm. which I really love. Yeah. It, this, it's a really nice color, isn't it? It is. It's yeah. kind of like a champagne color. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Natural. And then um, I think this is Linen mm -hmm. in the Fine Tweed Haze. Yeah. So the um, the yarn that you got from your stash is actually an alpaca with a core like type spinning. So this yeah. that Fine Tweed Haze is exactly that yeah. as well, except that it, it's made with uh, mohair. Yeah. Uh, sorry, no, fine alpaca and merino wool, whereas yeah. yours has mohair is, in it. This is alpaca. Oh, it's alpaca. No, it's mohair. alpaca and silk. Okay. Yep. 
All right, so they're very similar. Yep. This may be just a touch thicker when yep. you knit it up based on my um, happy to see you yes. cowl that I did. Yeah. But uh, so we have natural in the lopi with the linen. Yep. But you and Betsy picked out a lot of different colors. We as well. did. Yeah. So okay. let's take a look at those. So this one is the Trondheim blue. Mm -hmm. I, there's something about this blue that just, I just love it. Yeah. And um, I don't know all of these names. I don't have them all memorized. But there's, it's blue 704 yep. in Kid Sill Case. It goes perfectly. Yep. Just will add a little bit of a dimension. It's just yep. slightly darker. And most of the colors that we chose are, are that way. They're either slightly darker or slightly lighter. Right. right. And then the next one is the mauled wine. And that's with, uh, this must be liqueur, mm -hmm. 595 liqueur can you guess which one's my favorite <laughs> is it this one yes <laughs> so that matches perfectly but you could also pair this with um you had this paired with it as well no i don't uh, think so that must be there wasn't one with this no that works though. yeah so this is blackberry yep color um uh hmm, here's the number 641 with amethyst brooch mm -hmm. That'll add a nice dimension to that yeah. as well. So mulled wine with liqueur yep. and amethyst brooch with blackberry. Blackberry is going to make another appearance yes. a little bit later. And I'm going to put these this over here. This is one of Betsy's favorites. Yeah. This is cinnamon. Yeah. And soil. Is it soil? 733. Yep. Okay. There, those, there's three colors around the soil, like that color. Yeah. There's caramel soil and another check. one but the number is 733 yeah so you can it's yeah it's a good um, it be in the show notes yeah okay perfect that's nice and then i like pesto this lopi is uh it was over dyed green mm -hmm. on a black ish uh lopi fleece and we call the color pesto and if you put that with jelly this is uh, jelly is five ninety seven. That's gonna just pop. Yeah, it's gonna be gorgeous. That's a really fun combo. Yeah, that's that, a Betsy combo. That's really really nice. Yep. And um, then we have spruce, which is one of our all time favorite colors in any, any base, base that we make. Yeah. And that's been paired up with um, six seventy one. The number is right. It's 671. I think it's Peacock is the name of the... I don't have them all 83 memorized. <laughs> but I think it's Peacock. And that's it. So uh, some really, really great combinations. And you can have one of those. Yeah. Wow. And it's warm. It's cozy. It's actually easy to customize too. Yeah. Because you could make the the ribbing longer and even fold it under and do like a double thick layer oh, if wow. you wanted to do okay. that. So okay. yeah, there's all sorts of possibilities with that. Right. Yeah. And uh, we were talking about this um, in a previous episode about the cold dipping. Yes. So if, you, if you're a cold dipper, someone was asking me about a pattern for a hat that they bought Lopi actually okay. because they were going to put it on after their cold dip. But this would have been one. too bad. I didn't know about that. Yeah. That's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it'd be perfect for sure. Yeah. Okay. So that's um, great. So Heatherdale Lopi with Kid Silk Haze or the Fine Tweed Haze. And there is other colors in Fine Tweed Haze, which would go with these uh, Lopi colors as well, but yep. uh, go through all of them. We just took the ones that we like the best. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and um, so then you, the next thing that we were going to talk about is uh, Oslo Hat. Yes. So... This is not very far along yet, Okay, but starting. it is the Oslo hat by Petite Knit, and yeah, I'll oh, show a picture of it. Stuff. Yes. Um, it's done in ginger? Ginger, yeah. And felted tweed. Felted tweed, yeah. It's, it's a very simple rolled brim, brim or double thick brim hat, um, and I think she even rolls it up so it's triple yes okay. i haven't looked yes. that far yes. yet but she does have a triple brimmed hat yeah, yeah it looks like it's gonna be really warm right. and the perfect kind of hat for 
right. maritime winters. Yeah, and that's good because uh, even though um, felted tweed, they say, is the DK, it's kind yeah. of a fingering yeah. fingering weight. And uh, I bet it would be nice if you held it double, too. Yeah. She also has a version where you hold it with Kitzel case. Yeah, of course she does. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I didn't have the right color kids at home. <laughs> it's petite knit, right? Yeah. 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 So definitely with ginger we have we there's eighty three colors of kids silk K's. If you want it to do something in that color, you can find a color to match, but yeah. it would be really nice with uh the felt of tweed with the kids just make would make it a little bit squishier. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm kinda of thinking since I'm not that far along, maybe I should just pull it out. Why and start over with kids silk K's in it too. Oh, <laughs> I don't know. Is, is that weird? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's going in the wrong direction. But you do oh, what well. you want. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that's just to start it. Yeah. Thing. Just a tiny little thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then um, you have hand spinning. I do. So is it just me? Is it just one of those things that when you start uh, seeing things or talking about things, you see it everywhere? But support spindling is having a moment. Definitely. Yes. Yeah. Maybe it's because of you. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's just the convenience of it. Right. Like, it, it's so easy to pick up and put down, and there's no setup required other than, you know, choosing, like, a little bowl. Right. Or, or cup to spin in, and your fiber and your spindle. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. I think it's the simplicity. Yeah. So we've been showing this for a few episodes now. Yeah. But Andrea Mowry is support spindling now. Yes. And they there was she did an Instagram post last week where she's laying on her sofa and her son is like sitting right there yep. and she's got a blanket around her and her legs crossed and she's just she's just spinning. So I think that that's the appeal right yep. now. Um, and again, we have beautiful support spindles, which we can barely keep in stock from yeah. Fox Mountain. And I do do happen to have them now. So if you yeah. uh, if you want to get get in on the craze, yeah. then we have what you need. Um, and we do have the table bowls. Mm -hmm. So in the in the post that Andrea Ma Maori did or showed she's actually has a table bowl, but she has it sitting on her leg. Yeah. So there are lap bowls. I don't have any of the lap bowls, mm -hmm. but um, those sit between your, your legs. They've got like a stem on them that you yeah. put between your legs, but clearly you can use a lap bowl or a table bowl anywhere yeah. as well because Andrea Mallory has one on her knee. Yeah. Okay. So, um, and this is a skein you've been working on yeah, for, for a, a bit. While. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so that's the first half yeah. there. So, of course, Simone is doing a fractal yep. spin, <laughs> which is what she does. Uh, that's her go-to. She yep. loves it. Yeah. I like all the play with the it, color. Yeah. It gives you, um, if you don't know what a fractal spin means, it actually gives you an effect like all the spin cycle yarns. Yeah. This is all hand-spun fractals. Yes. Yeah. yeah. There's a little bit of um, fleece and harmony. Yeah. Right here as well. Yeah. But for the most part, it's... All hand spun and right. fractals. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that's the night shift. It is. Shawl, we should say. Yeah. Yeah. We'll talk about it with the three of us, but. Okay. So now you're on your fourth spindle. Yeah. So um, that is, then you're coming to the end. Yeah. I'm thinking. And okay. then it's ply time. Ply time. Yeah. Okay. And you'll, how will you ply them? I, <laughs> I have a shoe box. Oh, the shoe box. We yeah. saw the shoe box. Yeah. Right. I have a shoe box that I put them in and right. yeah, I just ply from there. Okay. Uh, but I do want to say when, with these support spindles, you want more than one. Um, you can get away with less, but if you're trying to spin, you know, four ounces or hundred grams of fiber, they get fairly heavy, fairly fast okay. and hard to, hard to okay. rotate. So you're looking at probably 25 grams comfortably on most of them. Okay. So you want more than one. So what would you do if you don't have... If you don't have more than one, yeah. you'd wind it off into a little ball. Okay. Yep. And, and then, then just label it. And then save it there. Yep. And then, because I know you're always all about um, making it accessible for everybody. So yep. if you have one, you then you would wind it. You don't want to let the twist go out of it. No. Nope. So you'd wind it into a ball. Yep. And then you would put the balls together in a shoe box, maybe, yep. and take the plies out. Yep. And then you're going to ply from there. Yep. And do you use this to ply as well? No. Okay. Um, I usually use my Jalligan. Okay. Yeah. 
So that's another type of spindle. Yeah. So if you don't have the gel again, you can use a drop spindle. Okay. That's fairly common for... <laughs> okay. Um, I suppose you could ply, but I'm not experienced in that. Okay. Yeah. Maybe we'll look that up and talk more about that. You'll yeah. be showing this probably finished in the next episode. Nope. No. It's nope. Not, it's not <laughs> okay. too slow for that. It's too slow. Okay. Yeah. So but that's before, kind of the pleasure of it, right? It's, yeah. It's that's a right. process. Before you're finished, we'll figure out how you ply if you don't have um, something else to ply with. There must yeah. be a way to do it. Yeah, there's got to be. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So that'll, that's your assignment. Yep. <laughs> And if there's not, then we will tell you that yep. you're going to have to buy something else. But yep. I doubt that that's true. Yeah. Somebody somewhere has figured out how to, well, it might show up in the comments. There we go. Yes. <laughs> yeah. If you know how to apply using your support spindle, yeah. let me know because I don't have any experience with that. Yeah. Yeah. Good. And it would have to be, if you've only got one, your plies are on a, in a ball and then you have to ply them together yep. using a tool that you would have. Yes. Okay. Yeah. That's and finishing. splicing the the bobbins together. Yeah. Or not which bobbins, is not, the, not a problem. The balls but, together. Yeah. yeah. But you have yeah. to be spinning natural fibers. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Is that it? Um, one little update. Oh, yes. The English paper piecing. Did a little tiny bit more. Not yeah. a huge amount. Mm -hmm. um, but recently got some more fabric yes. from the lovely Joanne. Yeah. There was a fabric swap. Yeah. Happening. She tempted Betsy and I, and we yeah. got. We got uh, some other people in on it too, so yeah, yeah. making a little bit of progress. Yeah. I still have okay. to sew there, but yes. yeah, yeah it I'm is. having fun. And you're taking out the 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 papers yep. as you go, so a few yeah. of them still have because you're not completely finished them, but yeah. some you have taken them out. So this is my yeah. like little water themed yes. one with yes. my salmon and my crab and my mermaid scales. Yeah, um, Betsy's already dubbed this the Catan quilt. Yes, after the I, Silos of Catan board game. <laughs> yeah, which I've never heard of before, but oh, we talked about it. Well, yeah, yes, yeah, that we talked about it last time. So, uh, how do you spell that? C A T A N. Oh, okay. I don't yeah. know why I've never heard of that game, but I'm going to have to look into it for over Christmas. We might have to have a board game night. Yeah, maybe we should. <laughs> and Ken's like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> we do kind of. Sort of three type A's. Yeah, we're oh, not competitive at all. No. I was telling you before we started recording about Kirby and I playing darts. Oh, and I'm like, okay. I won. Yeah, I won. Yeah. So he's going to practice when I'm not home. Oh, yeah. That's what I did when Ken was beating me at the driving game on a, <laughs> when an Xbox or something. Yeah, we don't like, like to compete. No. 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 <laughs> not at all. So I think that's it. I think so. Okay. See ya. Bye. Bye. So I absolutely love that hood. It is so cozy and warm and lovely. It's just gorgeous. And uh, as you saw, this is the first time that I that I saw it. It's just uh, fantastic. So that was the Tromso hood, hoodie. And she's made it in our Heatherdale Lopey with a Kid Silk Haze like uh, yarn. And I, I think that any of those combinations that we showed would be make a beautiful, beautiful hood. So the next segment that we're going to do is uh, we actually have an in the mill section. Section. So the three of us are going to sit together and talk about uh, what's happening in the mill in the last uh, couple weeks. So we have decided that we want to try a new yarn base, something that we're bringing in the fiber to make it. It's not something a fiber that we get here on PEI, but we've decided that we want to try a breed specific yarn. And uh, the first breed that we wanted to spin is Rambouillet. So we ha talk all about that project um, in the uh, in the mill section with the three of us. And we also talk about a new um, project that we're doing to um, st start stocking roving for felting. So you can check that out right now. Hi, you two. Hi, Kim. Oh. How are you? Good. Good. Yeah. Aren't you happy, Betsy? It's snow and wintry, and yeah. the, but with sun. Yes. 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 I thought you would have been like a little kid this morning. Um, yeah, it's bright. It's beautiful. I love it. I've been looking out the window a lot. I had, <laughs> I didn't like run around and play in it or anything. No, no, no. I know, but you've been waiting for this. I, I, I also, 
I so we have had a heat pump installed since oh, okay. last winter, and they were very clear about you need to keep all the snow off the top of it. Don't let snow pile up. So of course, first thing this morning, on my way out to the car, I got to clear off the top of the heat pump. Well, the heat pump has a fan that's blowing. Okay. So I took my brush that you sweep the car off with, and I brushed it off, and it all came like whoosh oh. right back into my oh, face, okay. which was a very like. Bracing. silly thing to to do i'm yeah. a canadian i should know better oh, okay but anyway i squealed quite a bit and my daughter waiting for the bus was like what <laughs> she thought you got your hand caught in the heat bump well and i was <laughs> telling simo because we we try to do makeup and look pretty for you folks yep yeah um Part of me, and then like my mascara started melting off my face because oh. the snow is melting and the mascara is melting oh. anyway i do love the snow <laughs> <laughs> I just it's forgot that in your it. face. Nick it's not in your face. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we should start off this section by saying what we're wearing Excellent. because people will ask. Okay. And then I have to write a comment. So which I don't mind writing the comments, but I've been I'm way behind on comments <laughs> because it's just been kind of crazy here. Yeah. So I think what's going to happen is because we've always I've always prided myself in the fact that I answer every comment. So I think there's going to be just a bunch of hearts coming. Oh, okay. Every, everybody. I'm so that they know them. you read it. Yes. yes. So I okay. read them all. Yeah. But, um, and I answer, I, it, but I'll tell you why people are going to say, well, don't worry about answering, but it bugs me because you have all these unanswered comments there and uh, it keeps reminding you, you have un, un, oh, unresponded to comments. Okay. So, which most wouldn't bother most people because they drop out off after three months or something <laughs> like that. Wouldn't bother most people. But for me, I just, the my... It's an undone checklist. Yes, yeah, exactly. I get it. Totally. You, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, I think that it's re respect to acknowledge that people are watching us and in, are engaged in us because we really, really do appreciate it. Yes, yeah. very much yeah. so. So that little tangent was be all before we were saying what we're wearing. Got it. Yeah. So Betsy, go ahead. You I go am wearing the Patty Wrap, which yes. came out of a Rowan magazine. Right. And I'm forgetting the number now. Um... I will put it on the bottom okay. because it was a, it's a, um, a special book. It's not, a um, it wasn't right. one of the main magazines. Okay. So you can actually buy that pattern. Yes, you can. You can. Yes. Oh, I didn't realize that. Okay. I think so. Yeah. So it's all using alpaca classic. classic. Right. Yes. Which has a little bit more of a fuzzy halo to it right. than the alpaca soft DK, which oh, yeah, I'm going to use eventually too. Are you? Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> And ironically enough, I chose to wear an alpaca classic sweater as well. So yeah. this is Rain, R E I N, uh, of the uh, New Nordic Unisex uh, book, which so designed by Arnan Carlos mm -hmm. with Intarsia, also an alpaca classic, uh, Snowflake and Eclipse. I can't remember all the names. I know it's Berry, Peacock. Um, gray melange gray melange right eclipse is yep. the dark I don't, what's this one called um mm -hmm. i think it's called um sun sun something okay anyway the, this this yellow and the pink green moss were what drew me to it yeah and green moss and is green, the, yeah. yeah anyway so the colors that were in the um, in the pattern except for the gray melange you changed no it's in the pattern it's just I moved around where it's okay. used. Mm -hmm. The only one, um, Eclipse, I believe, is not actually exactly. in the pattern. They use the darker charcoal gray. Yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, anyway. And Simone is wearing the Night, night Shift cowl. Andrea Maori. Yeah, Night Shift shawl. And or it's shawl. Yes. In hand spun yarn. Yeah. yeah. It's gorgeous. Which it really is. I feel like I can just sit here and... I know. Keep finding different pieces and bits, and I love it. It's yeah. really gorgeous. Yeah. It's um, mosaic. Right. Yeah. Right. So it's it's really really fun. Yeah. It's yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Okay. So that's out of the way. Now, <laughs> this is actually going to be an in the mill section mm -hmm. because we've been back hard at work in the mill, uh, making new things and discovering things. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So for the first time ever, we're actually spinning with a f uh, fiber that we didn't get here on the PEI. <laughs> so we're trying we we want like we, we are spinning up 
almost everything that we can get on PEI. Like making sure that any little crumb that hits the floor gets scooped up, exactly. saved, and spun into yarn. Yes. <laughs> so we are actually coming to the end of what's available to us. Um, I mean, obviously it replenishes itself. That's the great <laughs> thing about wool. Yes. Is that it's gonna, next year there will be a whole new crop. But we have had to um, find ways to um, do more because of the production like we're going full steam and, and we're yeah, yeah. keeping up but so what we've decided to do is um we will not we'll still be spinning with natural fleece that's and we won't be using um synthetic fibers in the things that we make here and we will still be dyeing it with greener shade dyes mm -hmm. and i don't want to muddy the waters about entering um, different kinds of fibers into our regular yarn bases. Mm -hmm. So the Selkirk Worsted, um, Signature Aran, all of the ones that you know and love from Fleece and Harmony yeah. will remain the same. We have a supply that's good enough to keep up the pace with those kind of sales. But we are introducing a couple, we may be introducing a couple, we'll see how the first one goes, of breed specific spins as well but we have to purchase that fiber yeah it's not super wash and um but it is it is not fiber that i can get from a flock of sheep here on pei mm -hmm. and we'll make that really clear that you're buying something yeah different yes made here going through the same kind of processing still dyed with greener shade dyes so heavy metal free dyes and in great colors but i think um especially the dyer is excited to see, <laughs> to see what's well, it's just um the base is i think going to be a whiter base than what yes. ours is yes. and so i'm just curious to see how the colors are going to behave yes on this lighter base so we don't have any dyed to show you today because it's being dyed today <laughs> yep. so you'll have to um you'll have to look uh i will have some pictures in the newsletter yes. so yep. um and then we'll have pictures online because this will be available to purchase by the time you're looking at this yeah. and the first breed specific uh yarn we're going to make is Rambouillet. so we were like ooing and eyeing <laughs> um so this is it the base because betsy's got uh a lot of it soaking right yes. now getting, <laughs> getting ready to die and um it is a dk weight we've decided to do a three ply dk so it is 160 yards to 50 grams. So we went with smaller um, skeins in case you want it to, um, to do color work with it. Mm. So from a spinning perspective, Simone, what would you say about this yarn? It's not, it's different from our base that we use for the, the other Fleece and Harmony mm -hmm. yarns. Yeah. It's smoother. It's smoother. It's more matte. Yes. So I think that it's definitely going to take the color differently for Betsy. Right. Um, and it, yeah, it's, it's bouncy. Yeah. But not ours has, does ours have some more curl or crimp to yeah. it? I think it's not as crimpy as yeah. what we've been using. Um, I would have to look at the lock. Oh, okay. Just to yeah, remember sure. off the top of my yeah. head. Yeah. It, do, right. it doesn't have as much crimp. Yeah. 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 But we uh, we haven't even knit with it yet. No, this so. is not even soaked. So this is just what came straight off the spinner. So. Yeah, exactly. And often when I put it in the hot water to soak beforehand, I can see kind of like Textual it'll changes. plump out a bit. And yeah. I definitely saw that this morning right. when I dropped it in the water. It, it kind of like <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it um, it also is a very round yarn. Yes. yes. Yeah. So, um, so would that make it lovely for cables? Absolutely. Ooh, yes. I'm excited. Yes. yes. Yeah. It'll be nice for uh, color work and for cables. So, yeah. so you have to check out the newsletter. So yeah. uh, if you haven't signed up for the newsletter, um, well, you'll be too late. <laughs> <laughs> but this is good. <laughs> Because the newsletter goes out at the same time this gets published. <laughs> but um, as uh, we've talked about many, many times, is that we always show things first in the newsletter yes. before on yeah. the podcast. But in this case, uh, we were excited to get it out there. So, uh, we're And showing... I will clarify, too. It's just the first four colors. Yes, the yeah. first four colors. Yeah. So we're doing um, Autumn Birch, yep. uh, Amethyst Brooch, Brooch. Plover. Plover and cranberry and cranberry and natural. Yeah. So yeah. the first five, uh, the first five colorways. But we'll be working now on this with, for the next couple of yeah. weeks. So we'll be 
putting out more colors, and those will all go in the newsletter uh, even before the next episode, too. And okay. we're super excited because when we chose the colors, we laid it out, and we were purposeful about finding Kids Hill K's that goes with it, Yes, each one. So you can either choose to do one that's very similar and just make it extra fuzzy, or, I don't know, maybe people want to start trying some marling. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. Oh, okay. <laughs> we'll see how this is. It's been a new adventure. Yeah. Because yeah. we've just used our, the fiber that we get here for so long, but we're all kind of, ooh, ah, what is this? It's nice. So, and um, it was funny too, because whenever it was all spun up and we're discussing the colors and Betsy came out, she's like, what color will we do first? Kim and I both went, cranberry. At the yeah. Same time. <laughs> yeah. I can just imagine what that rich red it's is going to be on like. Yeah. 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 Okay, and I just have discovered I'm completely useless for twisting the skein. So that's... I will use my little invention out back. Yeah, so we'll just set it aside for you now. You are yeah. the skein twister. Yes, yes. extraordinaire. Yes. So that's the first thing that we're working on. And then um, I don't know how many of um, you viewing are familiar with the Belfast Mini Mill store as well. So Belfast Mini Mills is the uh, name of the company that makes the milling equipment that we use. And they're just seven kilometers down the road. Yeah. So like, I'm like, if you want it local, we're really, we got <laughs> even the machines that are, are manufactured seven kilometers away. But uh, they had, they also had a store for many years mm -hmm. and they've just closed that store as of October 15th. And one thing that they did at the Belfast Mini Mill store or sold a lot of at the Mini Mill store, they made it in their mill, is uh, roving for felting. Mm -hmm. So with them... Closing the store, felters are going a little crazy. <laughs> They're wondering who is going to make the roving for the felting because it was one of their uh, one of their key items that they sold. Mm -hmm. So we're taking over the felting roving roving production. So we dabbled in roving. And we basically only made felting, um, roving, and bats when we had um, leftover fiber that uh, just from the, like our mill ends and things mm -hmm. like that. So um, now we're, we're in the roving business apparently. For real. For real. <laughs> yes. So, <laughs> and again, we're not going to, uh, we can't use up all of the wool that we buy here on Prince Edward Island for that because we would literally be using every, everything mm -hmm. that uh, we could. So we actually have purchased some Merino, which is what we'll, we'll use. We're going to try Merino and we're going to try Corydale because we can purchase uh, both of those fibers um, in quantity. So we started on the roving track. Yep. Yes, we have. So we've dyed up the first 10 colors. 10 colors. Um, we're not quite sure how many colors we'll end up with. No, we just don't know yet. <laughs> we don't know yet. And uh, so we've started uh, processing it uh, for this, this week, tomorrow, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, the first bits of roving that are processed are go going to come uh, off the carter. And Janet, who uh, works here, is actually in charge of that project. So she's going to be the roving maven. And uh, we did... Um, before we decided that we were going to do it, we did do a little bit of experimentation. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And I did some reading because mm -hmm. um, none of us, I, I don't think anyway, unless someone's hiding something more, have done a whole lot of felting. No. Um, so the bit of reading I was doing about it, what kind of excites me about it is it really is like you can paint with this stuff. Right. So like the book I was looking at was teaching you how to take two colors and blend them together on those I'm sure they have a proper name. They look like those dog combs. Hand yeah. carters. Hand, Hand carters. carters. Yeah. Yeah. I knew there was something more official than dog yeah. combs. Yeah. Like blending colors together to create new colors mm -hmm. using yeah. two or three or however many roving bits you want. Anyway, right. I'm excited about where this might lead for also my own personal enjoyment. Right. <laughs> and um, so... Um, I don't know how many colors the Belfast Mini Mill store had, but it was a lot. <laughs> more than a hundred probably. I don't know. It was a lot. A lot. A lot. Yes. Yeah. So, that, I mean, they had walls of it. Yeah. So we um, probably will not have that many colors, although who knows what happens over time. You tend to tend to expand it. We, we wanted our first, uh, what Selkirk worsted, to have 16 colors. 
And now we have like a hundred. So who knows where it, where it'll go? Sixteen feels like small. Yeah. Like how would we ever pare it down to sixteen? I know. I know. That's how it all started. So uh, so who knows what's going to happen with this? Um, but uh, we're pretty excited about it. And the choice of colors that we will make at first, because Betsy actually just decided mostly what colors that we're uh, that what we're doing and how we process. That's right. Throw me under the felt yeah. bus. No. <laughs> <laughs> But I wanted to say about the fact that there, you did kind of a selection with light and dark yeah. and to what you were saying about blending, yes. you can blend the rovings together to make colors is that you were pretty careful about choosing colors that if they were blended, it will expand. Hopefully the, the color range. range of that color. Yeah. Right. Um, and I also kind of like themed it a little bit where I went with sort of um, animal nature colors because mm -hmm. I, from what I'm looking at books, folks, that's all I'm looking at so far. Um, when you're doing painting, you want a lot of those sort of animal nature colors. And then I went with also the just really um, beautiful, bold colors to have that you can tone down. Mm -hmm. And then I did a little section of what I'm calling whimsical, right. um, just because the one book I happened to be looking at had some really fun, cute, creative um, projects that have like some whimsical colors in right. it. So that's right. kind of where we're starting. Yeah. So we'll see how that goes and we'll be selling it in small packets like this. So um, these little bags will be like a two ounce bag and uh, then we'll sell it in larger quantities because there are some felters that are going through quite large quantities. Mm -hmm. um, the shipping for roving is completely crazy because you sh you're shipping air basically mm -hmm. but you're charged as if, if it was lead <laughs> so um we will it. be making um as uh simone calls it wool jerky yeah so <laughs> what we'll do is for shipping we will send it out in backpacked um yeah. which is betsy and i are kind of on the same like we're we're like uh, we because we love the fluff and what we want to open the box and feel all See warm and fuzzy squishy, yeah. and squishiness, but it just doesn't make sense to mm -hmm. to do it in this case. Um, so we will be backpacking yeah. um, when we ship ship, but in the store we'll have some packages that are that are open. Yeah. And Simone also made a good point about the old jerky is that it's actually because it's sealed. It's good for storage yes. at here and at your place yeah. as well. So, because um, I know I buy hand spinning fiber mm -hmm. online, and most of the time now it comes vacuum sealed. Right, and it's perfect because I just have a little cubby and I slide it in there until I'm right. ready to use it. Right, and when you open that up, it poops air, right up. Air gets everywhere, right? And so it yeah. brings it right. I usually back give it a little it. shake. Yeah. yeah, just a little kind of fluff, and, and then, then it's good to go. Ready to yeah, go. Yes. yeah. So that's what we'll be doing. Yeah. So that's a new adventure yeah and uh we'll we'll uh we're still dyeing it with greener shade dyes as well so um that means that you you'll get some as we like to say not out of the can colors like all of our yarns because yep. they only carry nine colors and they all need to be blended mm -hmm. so so that's what we'll be uh we'll be doing and so stay tuned for that it, it'll eventually it'll take some time to get it on the website and yes. and get organized with it but we've started as of tomorrow the production has started yeah so we'll see where that goes so also on a dying vein we oh. should talk oh, about oh yes that's right yes. Oh. so oh. <laughs> yeah <laughs> So here we like to keep it real. Yeah. Yes. So Betsy's going to tell us a story. Yeah. So last week or a week, I don't remember, two weeks ago, um, I had an order come in that I hadn't done in a while for a yeah. variegated yarn. Yeah. Um, I had worked on it with Jennifer Hicks before she had left, and then we had a good supply, so I hadn't had to redo it. Mm -hmm. So I went to dye it up, and it um, didn't go quite according to plan. <laughs> So sometimes when that happens, um, a recovery that we can do from that is to over dye. Mm -hmm. Black is a mm -hmm. nice go to with over dye. It usually can cover almost everything. Right. Um, this one, so I did that. It's on stock. So we have never sold our, our crow wing on yeah. stock before. So I was attempting to do that. However, the yarn had a mind of its own and mm -hmm. decided to create its own beauty. Mm -hmm. So it has little pops of color that are coming through right. from what it was supposed to be and didn't quite 
right. come to be. Right. Um, yeah. So you just don't want to over process it because then you might get some felting or yeah. thing like that. So we don't want to do that because we definitely don't want to waste uh, our precious sock yarn. No. So it's an over dye. Yeah. And it has little pops of uh, like a dark, really, really dark blue, which you barely be able to see, and um, some burgundy that are sh is shining through. So in our world, we call this five after midnight. <laughs> <laughs> and then Simone came along and found yes. a beautiful color yes. to pair it with. So we're always thinking about uh, projects yeah. that we can do. So do you want to talk about the customer that came in, Simone? Yes, we yeah. had a lovely customer on Saturday, and she kindly brought in a couple of finished projects, and one of them I totally fell in love with. Right. It's the Curvette Shawl by Stephen West. Mm -hmm. And it's a really neat pattern because right. it's done mostly in garter stitch, yeah. and it goes in curves, hence curvettes. Yeah. But it also throws in little bits of lace weight. Yes. To change the texture. Okay. Yeah. And it gives you it kind of a lace weight. I wasn't. I didn't oh, see it. Well, no. It's amazing. Oh, okay. it's, it's absolutely incredible. And yeah. she did it in three different colors yeah. of sock yarn. Mm -hmm. And I fell in love with it immediately. Yeah. Yeah. It's gorgeous. So what happens is you have um, a section of garter. And then you have the lace weight in between, and then you have a section of garter. So the lace weight carries the, the garter sections, similar to what happened in my Birds of a Feather yes. shawl, mm -hmm. but only that. the the um, the uh, connecting rows, are, are there's only one or two rows, I think. Yeah, are, um, yeah it's yeah. Quite, quite thin, but you have this play of being able to see through the th fine parts with the, okay. the fine lace and then you have this beautiful squishy yep. garter yes. and it has like a lot of drape. Yeah. So Simone came up with, um, we'll call it five after midnight. Sure. Okay. So that's what we'll list it as five <laughs> after midnight with, um, this is black current in uh, Rowan kids silk haze and it's number 641 and it's a perfect, um, as you look at this, you're only going to see black. Yeah. So you have to really be up close to see the the subtlety of um, of the uh, the over dye, yeah. and then you'll have this beautiful um, black bear, or black current um, in between the different sections if you want to yeah. make that shawl. Yeah. And I can't remember exactly the quantities. I think it's three balls of. It was sixteen hundred and ninety yards total for the shawl okay yeah. so we'll put uh, i'll put down here how many balls of uh, kid silk haze you would need and how many skeins of the point print sock you would need if you want to make that, yeah. that shawl it was spectacular yeah, yeah. and we yeah. only have nine of these balls yes. in stock and we won't be making it again no not exactly like this anyway yeah because we won't have the however from what you're describing it sounds like any of our sock combined with the what eighty some odd colors of kids so right. yeah yeah could make you could do it if you don't yeah. want to do it out of this this is uh we just found that this was really it was complimentary. Really nice yeah. a, this looks like cozy winter elegant I really like it yeah yeah and yeah this picks up the little pops yes all it does through. yeah. I can see it sitting here with this beautiful winter sun shining yeah. in. I can see it. Yeah, it's very yeah. subtle, but it's... Uh, yeah. I kept running back and forth from the Carter out here to the kid soap wall and pairing things up. And I'd look at it at the table and I'm like, no, that's not working. Go back. Go yeah. back. Nice. That was my Saturday after seeing that shawl. It's like, okay. You need to find something yeah. that's... Uh, this is yeah. gonna, this yeah. is so that's... Uh, and like I said, I'll put the quant... That's probably underneath. I'll leave it up. So, and so you can, uh, and this will be called Five After Midnight. Yep. And uh, the one, the one I'm showing is the the Black Current uh, Six Forty One. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, is there anything else that we wanted to talk about? We've got the Ramboulet, we've got the Roving, and we've got the Curvette Shawl. So I yep. think that we covered it. it. So that's yep. what's been happening in the mill. Yeah. So we'll see you guys later. All right. <laughs> Bye. Bye. So it's been a bit crazy. We're really, really, really uh, excited about the new projects. And I can really hardly wait to see uh, the dyeing on the the uh, Rambouillet yarn because it is kind of a different color than the base that we usually dye with, which is, comes from our Prince Edward Island fiber. So again, I just want to repeat that 
we will continue to spin only natural fibers, but uh, we want to expand a little bit into different kinds of uh, bases. So, uh, but we'll make it very clear um, which which uh, yarns that we will continue to have just with the PEI fiber exclusively, and the, the uh, lines that we'll have that are uh, have the fiber imported. So the um, next, the, I'm just consulting the agenda because it's uh, quite a, a heavy agenda today. So uh, now next I'm going to sit with Betsy and uh, we're going to talk about her fabulous Sycamore cardigan, which is complete. And I'll give a little progress update on my trait uh, sweater that I'm, that I'm working on. Hi, Betsy. Hi, Kim. How are you? Good. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. So this is, <laughs> this is what we have been recording forever. Yeah. It's yeah. Been a bit long. I'm trying to like stay with it. Stay, stay with, with it. it. Yeah. Come on, shake it up. Shake it up. <laughs> <laughs> we have, uh, I was late this morning because I wanted to, I actually had to feel like I wanted to get in the right frame of mind yes. because I was, didn't want to be rushed. So I did, took my time a little bit. Right. So I, I was late. And um, then we chat it, and yeah. I hadn't done the agenda beforehand, which I usually do. So then we, that took time. Then we had a lovely customer come, and uh, so we had to we stopped obviously yeah. recording, and um, now here we are, the third section. Yes, of two more two more to go for me. Yeah, you'll be all right. You yeah. can do it. I can do it. Okay. You also woke up to a gorgeous snowfall. Which, exactly. did that mean, because I saw the sheep come out this morning, yeah. and they kind of shuffled around in the snow, but they headed back to the barn. So was there hay in the barn put no, out for them? No, oh, they okay. actually they were right. still, they're still, still finding eating it. grass. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, even now I can see it's melting, yeah. and the grass is sticking up through. It's all, so. yeah, and where yeah. they are, the grass is a little bit thick, so yeah. it's not like they're they're having a hard time. Nice. <laughs> no, but I was just thinking about that. Actually, what I came over is that we will have to now we'll have to start putting hay yeah. out because it's the grass will not recover at this point because now it's not growing anymore. But they've they've done their job. Now all I can think is that they're eating matcha ice cream this morning. Yeah. Did you, <laughs> you know, grass and a little bit of ice and matcha yeah. ice cream. Yeah, exactly. But that's so weird that you talked about that because oh. I just watched a segment that Mary Berry. If you oh, don't know, yeah, 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 yes. yes. She just interviewed a brother and sister team in uh, the UK that makes matcha ice cream. Oh, well, there you go. That's so weird. <laughs> I thought, I thought, where did you, where, 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 we were watching the same nope, thing? just popped into my head. Wow. Because I was okay. thinking of them munching and getting a mouthful of snow and a mouthful of grass. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's so weird. Yep. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> okay. So you've got a finished object. And that's all. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let's see that cardigan. Sure. All right. Okay. It's gorgeous. And does it fit perfectly? It does. I would say it's a bit roomier than maybe I would have thought, but she loves it because she wants to layer it. Yeah. She actually had gone out and bought the shirts to go under it before I even had finished Oh, it. okay. So, yeah. So this is a sycamore cardigan. Yes. And I took note... Uh, mental note it is life is cozy life is cozy. that is who the pattern is by okay yes. life is cozy the sycamore cardigan okay out of our spruce in selkirk worsted and this has been blocked it has been washed and blocked it and, is yeah. absolutely silky gorgeous just like that. yeah yeah i really am very proud and excited about this one yeah i would be happy to have her wearing it and say my mom made it for me. Yeah, great. Yeah. And uh, so, like we said, or have been saying, yeah. is that the the party is in the sleeves. Yes. So these sleeves yeah. are something else. And true to our yarn, which was great, because the first time I tried it on her, when it wasn't blocked yet, she was like, oh, they aren't quite as balloony as I hoped. Mm -hmm. But after I blocked it and let it rest for a while, our yarn does, and I took this into account, tends to go a little wider. Right. So the sleeves did exactly that. Okay. So perfect. it's perfect now. And the length is good for her. Great. Yeah. Because yeah. I took that into account. I knew that was a possibility. And I think I measured off of my sleeve length, which is a little long for her. So right. it was great. Yeah. So this is what happens to our yarn if you haven't knit with it before. After you wash and block it, it tends to get shorter, yeah. but goes wider. Yeah. Yeah. And if, as long as you know that, Which I always I say, give yourself an inch to yeah. an inch and a half 
in the length that for a full size sweater yeah. and um, you you need to do a little bit extra and then it'll go a little bit wider so if it looks tight that's why I, I'm always my heart is filled with trepidation every time I'm knitting something for myself because I'm like I don't think it's going to fit with, with ways but if you measured and blocked yeah. or blocked and measured it always fits it but, relaxes out yeah, yeah exactly that's great so what slowed me down to do the second sleeve, were, that the second that's sleeve? the second sleeve, okay. were these little nubs. So there's there's little, we'll call them bobbles. There's little bobbles and there's larger bobbles. Right. And the first time, um, the little ones are done with knitting needles. Right. And I, I managed to get through it. I don't know how because I could not, for the life of me, repeat it on the second sleeve. So I actually, it actually sat for a few days while I just pondered on how am I going to make the second sleeve <laughs> match this first sleeve there's no way i'm pulling back it's like way too far up um so what i did is i just used the crochet hook method that you use for the larger bobbles remembering that the uh, tutorial had said for the larger the bobble just use a larger crochet hook and more twists around right. it so i was like aha so i just went with a smaller crochet hook Right. Significantly smaller. Right. And just made sure they were nice and tight. So yeah. I don't think you can. They're they're fantastic. Yeah. The bobbles are spectacular. Yeah. Betsy. No, oh, thank you. Yeah. So I so, love the look of those cable sweaters with bobbles, a ton of bobbles on them. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> there were a lot of work, eh? They they are. They're really, really cool and I love the end result. And surely I'd get better after well, I think I've probably done fifty yeah. or more. Yeah. But yeah, I would have to take that on with some real, like, patience, I okay. think. Okay. So, I actually don't see a difference in the two bobbles. Excellent. Yeah. And I'm pretty picky about that kind yeah. of thing. If anything, I, I would say maybe just a little... Well, no, I think, again, blocking, I sort of patted them into shape. Because these smaller ones aren't supposed to be as... Right. Fluffy. Well, I so. actually don't see a good. difference. Good. Yeah. Perfect. So you did a good job. Mission accomplished. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's gorgeous. Thank you. It feels like you. I want to wear it. it. Oh. It's so silky. It's gorgeous. Yeah. And she's a Christmas lover. Okay. So she had thought about getting a red shirt to put under it, and then she had second thoughts. She was like, mm, maybe that's a bit much. <laughs> so I wouldn't call it a Christmas sweater because no. it's, the spruce is really blue, but yeah. she can definitely use it and call it. For, for Christmas, Christmas during the Christmas season. Yeah, yeah, it's gorgeous. So she wanted to wear it today, but I told her, mm -mm, not yet, it's not yours yet. <laughs> yeah, it has to go on the podcast yes, first. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so, so now yeah. what are you going to do? I need to finish the Nordic sweater oh, yes. that I'm doing, okay. the Norwegian farm sweater. Yeah, but that's and not going to keep you occupied. It's straight, straight I, stuck in that. I have some small projects okay. I'd like to do. I, I'm i missing doing amigurumi knitting, oh. little critters. So okay. I did get a book not too long ago that I'll share with you eventually, and I want to dive into some of those. So, okay. Yeah. Actually, I saw the book. You so did that's see a good, the book. <laughs> yes. So we'll see. Uh, let me know when you're going to start that. Sounds good. Yeah. I have to get the book. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. So it's just a little palette cleanser. Yeah. And just... Um, You've done some big projects. I've done a lot of big sweaters. And yeah. I just miss some of those. I also, I keep talking. I think I've been talking for a year about doing a pair of socks. Yeah. Which I have not done. But now I'm watching Simone just kind of whip them out using a, I'm not sure. She's not quite worsted weight. I'm not sure what she was using. Oh, she was using our um, natural, our natural black. black. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that, I mean, Simone can make anything look fast. Yeah. But it gave me confidence that I could finish a pair of socks yeah. Within a year. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, for sure. Yeah. Although um, some socks have almost as many stitches in them as, as like some bigger yeah, big right. projects. But yeah. just depend. I mean, I made yeah. a, um, for bagpiping, I made a cabled pair of hose. So they came all the way up to the knee. Gorgeous. And I think there was, I, there was probably more stitches in it mm -hmm. than that. Sock weight? Would you do that? Uh, it, was in, um, it was in a... I would say it was like a DK. Okay. Yeah, because okay. they're yeah. meant to be thick, like right. thickish. Yeah. So anyway, okay. but there was a lot of stitches yeah. in them. So I don't yeah. know. We'll see. Something will. Something always ends yeah, up. But you should on probably try a pair. I should. I, I haven't know. knit a pair of socks from since a long time. That's I think that might have been the last pair mm -hmm. of socks that I knitted. We might have to do a sock along where Maybe. Simone knits five pairs. Well, <laughs> and we try <laughs> to get one. Try done. to get one sock done. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, oh. but maybe that's going to be the next thing. We'll see. After the Marie Wallen thing. Oh, right. Yeah. <gasps> I have to pick that back up. I know. I had kind of set that aside. I talked about it. I mean, Simone and I talked about the okay. Marie Wallen. But yes. I let you off the hook. Oh. You don't even have ha, to mention ha, ha. it. Ha, ha, ha. I'm crocheting my Marie Wallen project. Yes. And so, I've been off the hook. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you've been off the hook for a little while. Did, did you do any in the last two weeks? A no. Stitch. Okay. So maybe I'll put that up. Maybe I'll say, don't start something new. Just work on that. That sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, get, get a few more. And yeah, February yes. 29th. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> no pressure. No pressure. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's kind of a little bit of pressure. Oh. Okay. So is that it? Well, what about you? Well, oh, right. <laughs> I have another project. I don't have anything finished. Okay. I am heating up, folks. I might have to shed the shawl. Oh, okay. So I feel the look look what I found. Rising. What? So I Is that what put, I think it is? Uh, yes. I went to put my <laughs> shoe on when I and I set it here on the table and then I just realized it's still there. It's off my toilet. The little like the thing the, the bolt the, cup the bolt, or the bolt tighter. Yeah. And somehow it found its way in my shoe. M. Ah, she loves it. She carries it around with her. Okay. Yes. Interesting. Yes. Maybe she so, wants you to like fill it, and give her a drink. No. I don't know, but she carries the. How so is she like in her mouth? It. Yes. Oh. Uh, she's biting it here like this, and she's one wandering around the house. Yeah, it's so weird. I've never had indoor cats, so I don't. It's kind of like boggles my mind. And then obviously but, she hides them because okay. I can't find the other one now. Oh, so no. in the house somewhere. But this one was in the toe of my shoe this morning. And the other thing that she loves is she will go crazy if she sees, she knows where we keep, uh, so in our old, the old section of the house still, right. the bathroom sink just has one of those rubber plugs. Oh. So we have to keep it in the medicine cabinet. She goes crazy. I after. can understand that because it would kind of bounce and wobble weirdly if she dropped it. Yeah, she and, carries that around yeah. with her too. It so feels nice on her teeth. Yeah, I get exactly. that. Exactly. So yeah. I know she's all about the bathroom pieces. Anyway, so there we are. There we are. She's I have gonna to be so to bored when your renovation is over. Yeah, <laughs> she'll be like, "This house is boring." Yeah, <laughs> no, no stuff to pick up. Oop, oop. There it goes. Okay. So I thought I had it covered, but I didn't. So I just um, have two balls because I'm alternating. <laughs> She's still searching for it. Here, I have to get it because if I want to hold it up. All right, so you just got to see the top of my head there. <laughs> okay, so this is my trait by Kate Davies, which has the most beautiful fabric ever. It's just, I love knitting it. Still no stitch stoppers on it. <laughs> I love knitting it, and I'm not alternating skeins um, as I go. But I did. I so point prim sock mm -hmm. in um, Northumberland blue with kid silk haze in. I think it's depth. I don't even remember anymore okay. what color blue it is. I think it's depth, and um, I'm making. Trait by Kate Davies, as I said, and this fabric is just fantastic. Yes. I love knitting it, and this is kind of my morning knitting with the co with coffee now because you don't have to. I'm just knitting. Um, she's, uh, I think it's kind of cropped in the pattern because I haven't actually looked in the pattern for a long time. Oh, you know, your your wardrobe might be lacking some cropped tops, Kim. <laughs> Not even a little bit interested. <laughs> Not even a little bit. So I am um, not a crop top wearer either. No, so I think that it's only um, the, I was going to say the recipe, the pattern only calls for 10 inches uh, before you split for the sleeves, I think. You're not far. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm cropped. not, yeah, okay. I'm not doing that. Yeah. I'm going to, uh, my go to is kind of 15 okay. inches. So I'm going to make it a longer. So a longer yours sweater. usually lands right on your hip. You like exactly. that? Right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I will be knitting for a while. It's just straight stocking net. Yeah. Kids silk haze and point prim sock, but it just feels so nice. It looks gorgeous. And when I got down to obviously a little bit more than this, of the ball the first ball then I joined the second ball so I'm just oh, alternating for blending, about blending. Okay. a little less than a third okay. of the ball was left and then I started and are you confident because of the kids okays you don't have to like that that won't show I don't as think much. so I don't I, I agree with her I don't think it will either yeah this kids okays is almost painting this like 
silvery glass over it. I don't yeah. even know how to describe it. It's really, really beautiful. Yeah, it is. And it yeah. feels so nice. It's very silky. Yeah. Um, so I'm still, and this is now, I'm knitting on my walnut tan, okay. which will, I'm about to start the decreases. So that'll go fast. And yep. then I'll, this will be my main project. Okay. And then um, I don't know what I'll catch up with next. Yeah. I think it's the wallflowers. I think that's all that I have left. Wow. To knit okay. or to do, to, do. to finish. Okay. All yeah. Right. Good so, for you. Uh, we'll do, I'll do crochet with and, uh, with this to spell. So maybe when you get your off. wallflowers going, that'll like get me going on my lovely shelf. Yeah. Flowers. Yeah. Like, no, I've got to start before that. <laughs> so <laughs> anyway, so that has a curiosity question about that. Yeah. So you have your Madeline, which I think you said was Kid Silk Haze held double. Yeah. Which I think I've heard you comment is fairly warm. And very warm. Yeah. So how warm do you think this is going to be? Probably pretty warm. <laughs> but I don't think that it'll be any warmer. No, because be the two Kid Silk... Well, the Kid Silk Haze has... has so much fluff that it traps a lot of air. Yeah. Okay. So that's what... It, but it's, And it's very light. Okay. This is definitely going to be... I wear the Madeline... Like mostly indoors, indoors yeah. and all year round. Yes. Okay. So this so, would be like. But this will be a winter sweater. January. For sure. Okay. And then it's got that little lacy part at the neck. So it's not going to be bad. But I it has see lace. the top. I haven't. Oh, yes, I yeah. remember. Yes, yeah, I remember. it's got a lacy part. So. It'll just open up. Right. The, the vents. <laughs> yes. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly it. So, um, so that's that. It's lovely. Yeah. Yeah. Fun. So I'm actually, um, I was just, when I was talking to Simone, I was telling her that the, the, um, pattern of the walnut tan is quite intricate. Okay. So it's not, it's, I'm knitting it while I'm watching TV, mm. but I, I do have to pay attention. You don't want to have to rip back. I don't want to have to yeah. rip back. Yeah. So I'm paying attention with that. Um, I should probably be doing that in the morning instead of, and doing this while I'm watching I don't TV. Know, but, but with like, coffee and yeah. you're just waking up and I know. now that the snow's on the ground yeah. i think that's a great idea yes well, yeah. that's... <laughs> <laughs> i affirm your morning oh, okay <laughs> great my morning routine all right i feel better about it now <laughs> kim doesn't need my affirmation she's good yeah <laughs> <laughs> anyway i think that's it yeah yeah all so right. we're kind of efficient okay so yeah. we'll we'll see what happens for next week yeah all right so see ya so that's about it. It's fairly uh, quick with those uh, those projects because uh, Betsy and I were not quite as prolific as we are sometimes and not as pro prolific as Simone. So our little section is uh, pretty efficient this time. So with that, uh, that brings an, uh, the podcast to a close. And as always, I hope that you have a beautiful two weeks and that you have uh, joy from whatever you're crafting. And we're going to spend a bit more time with the sheep in the harmony part. So um, sit back and relax and listen to some peaceful music. And I hope you get the kind of warm feeling that we get when we watch our sheep uh, when they're out in the fields around us. Have a wonderful two weeks. And we'll see you maybe on the Harmony Reads podcast next week. Or if not, then in two weeks time. Thank you.